originally and then went off on his own, uh, had a stint as a Verizon VP on innovation, very knowledgeable about the space, so you'll be in his capable hands and he'll be talking with a group of carriers around uh, the issue of how they handle Silicon Valley and what they're doing. So I'll leave that for them, but with that I guess it's a good time for now for me to invite up Mark. Mark! Maybe it's not a good time. <laughs> All right, there you are. Good to see you. Cheers. All right, and Mark Spanel, if you can slide behind him and take your seats. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Christina? What do I do with this? Let's go. Cheers. All righty. Thank you, Rob. Cheers. So this is the penultimate session for the afternoon, correct? Penultimate. All right, well, it's great to see you all. Um, I had the privilege of hosting the uh, Spotlight uh, session uh, yesterday. It was a really, uh, really good afternoon. We uh, went through a whole number of different topics. And then uh, so today, we get to close out on this uh, session on working with the telcos. We've got four great uh, panelists here with us. Unfortunately, Tata, who was supposed to be on the panel, they are unable to be here today. So we've got four great people. Um, we have. Um, Johan of Sandberg, who is a venture investor with Telia. Christina Clare, who is the business development manager for Sprint. Rob Hall, who's VP of uh, consumer and network scouting for BT. And uh, Deborah Banerjee, who is uh, the chief data scientist for Geo out of India. Um, and so the format is going to be similar to uh, what we did yesterday morning, which is each of the telcos or carriers is going to present two slides uh, discussing sort of the types of things, you know, how one works with them, how they engage with startups, the sorts of things that they're looking for. Some of them might have more of a consumer orientation, others might have more of a network orientation, so you'll, you'll see that come out in their presentations. And then we'll have, after that, uh, probably about 20-ish minutes, maybe a little longer, for some uh, Q&A that, that I'll lead, but hopefully we'll also have an opportunity to open up to you folks. And so thank you, first, first of all, for staying to uh, this point. I think you'll find this a very fruitful afternoon. So welcome to the panelists. Uh, and why don't we start with, uh, with Christina? Great, OK. Um, you bring up her slide, or do I do that? I think you do it. Perfect. So um, I'm Christina Clore with Sprint. I'm part of the technology scouting team based here in San Carlos. Um, we're co-located with the SoftBank team, so um, partners who come to talk with one get kind of get a twofer when they meet <laughs> with us both. Um, these are some of the focus areas that we've got for the coming year. Um, digital lifestyle is our way of wanting to put together um, a compelling offering. Um, and uh, an easier way for users to be able to do as much of the self-service functions as they want to do. Um, account control, um, the ability to get usage insights, um, the ability to be able to back up and restore things themselves if they want to. Um, obviously still can do it via customer care, but the ability to do those kinds of things themselves. So looking to see uh, partners who can help us uh, with that regard. Uh, we continue to be very interested in security and identity protection. Um, we obviously have uh, security and identity protection in place already. So if you have a solution for us, what we'd like to know is how are you different and what is it that you do that's um, differentiated or better than what probably we already have in place now. We're looking at um, all sorts of different kinds of mobile wallet uh, functions, um, any kind of financial instruments that might be interesting for people to do uh, via their device. We are looking for customer experience, so um, improved, uh, differentiated, interesting, compelling customer experience um, offerings, um, better ways to do customer care. I've met with a lot of companies uh, over the past two days that have very good customer care uh, suggestions and offerings and platforms, so those kinds of things. Uh, ways we, uh, we're doing some customer loyalty programs and, and program, um, projects that will help with that. The slide got all jumbled up. Um, the wholesale team is very interested in hearing from you if you've got sensors that need network connectivity. So whether it's a packaged solution or a custom solution for IoT, we'd love to hear uh, from you if you have something to bring to us there. 
Uh, IoT, as I mentioned, that's weird, okay. Um, IoT, uh, so the transportation, the retail package solutions, and smart cities. Uh, anybody who has some sort of an offering uh, in that regard, we'd, we'd love to hear from you about that. Accessories are interesting. The sweet spot is $100 to $200 for retail. And then, of course, we're interested in NFE and SDN solutions uh, that help us with our quest to 5G uh, and the ability to do more uh, with ever-increasing requirements on the network. Next slide. Um, many of you already are familiar with this uh, innovate.sprint.com. If you'd like to engage with us, um, the best way to do it is to log on to that uh, portal and uh, register your company and give us an idea of what it is that you do. Um, this is uh, the way that we manage and track the companies that we talk with. So uh, you have the ability to upload information there, including how you want to engage with Sprint and what your business model looks like. Uh, and then we, we review those on a uh, very, very often, on a weekly basis at the most. Um, so that comes into the system. We then have the ability to put your information in front of the rele relevant product teams. Or you can contact me directly. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Okay. So the next one is uh, Tilia. Uh, all right. Uh, so I'm uh, Johan Sandberg, as uh, Mark told you before. Uh, I represent Tilia. Uh, Tilia company is uh, an operator based in, in uh, Nordics and Baltics primarily. So we have, we're the biggest or second biggest mo mobile operator and ISP in basically the, the Nordic and Baltic countries. Uh, we also have operations uh, throughout the former Soviet Union states. Uh, but we're right now sort of in the process of exiting those countries and consolidating back to the more mature markets in the Nordic and Baltics. And uh, in that process also sort of uh, focusing, refocusing on innovation and trying to find sort of uh, businesses in, in adjacencies and, and growing the business in, in that sense instead of uh, growing, the, um, uh, growing the business in, in new markets, new developing markets. Um, we, when it comes to, uh, to working with, uh, with partners and, and growth companies and innovative uh, startups and so on, uh, we have a fairly uh, long tradition, especially on the distribution side. Um, for the past six, soon to be seven years, we've been running a partnership with Spotify. Um, and that sort of shaped how we, we built up that, 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 and it actually started sort of as a, a marketing campaign to differentiate towards the other operators in the, in, in the region. Uh, worked out pretty well, but fairly soon, soon uh, also grew into a, a, a fairly large business in itself. And we started to add other services on the same model. Uh, and that's a, a fairly good business for us right now. Uh, and we're always looking for new partners in that area uh, to add. Um, and, uh, but that, that's sort of the, the traditional way we've been, been working with partners. Uh, and recently, uh, I would say that we're uh, starting to, to uh, uh, expand and, and see how we can sort of open up information from, from, uh, from our networks and so on, which the partners can take and, and make their product stronger to get, and then sort of also lift the, the value of, of uh, our products. So one concrete example in that is the Telia Zone that we will be launching here in November. It's a fairly simple thing. We're basically taking all the RGVs, the residential gateways, the, the routers that we have in the homes and, and uh, our com uh, customers, and uh, opening up an API where our partners can see when somebody comes or leaves the zone and then create sort of functionalities within their products, uh, which will be unique sort of features um, uh, with regards to, to our networks. Uh, another example is the Telia Sense, a connected car platform uh, that we are launching just a couple of weeks from now, actually. And that's also uh, not only sort of a, a way to connect the car and, and create a Wi-Fi zone within the car, it's also opening up an ecosystem and, and where we invite partners to work with us and. and and create a sort of innovation, innovative uh, experience on, for, for the consumer. Um, and then uh, also, I mean, on, on the more early stage, uh, we are active in our, our, on, on the sort of uh, local market level with accelerators where we're trying to sort of sponsor the, the local startup communities. Uh, 
uh, through different kind of programs. Uh, right now we have one running in Estonia, one in, in Denmark, uh, and we just launched one together with Ericsson uh, in Sweden, because we are aiming to launch 5G in 2018, aiming to be the first operator in the world to do so. Uh, and we're working actively together with Ericsson to find use cases uh, when it comes to 5G. And uh, the, uh, the idea of between, uh, with this program, Scale Your Business, is to invite companies to, to come together with us and, and uh, find these use cases. Um, another program, uh, which I didn't put on the second slide, but that we just announced is uh, a call for innovation together with Swisscom and Proximus. Uh, right now, very sort of network focused, but the idea is to do these call for innovations on a half year basis or something like that. And then uh, hopefully tie more operators to it and, and uh, uh, yeah, and invite startups to, to innovate with us. So, yeah, we can take the next slide if you want to get in contact with us. Uh, so, uh, I, the, the call for innovation was. Uh, uh, it sort of came out after I did the slide, <laughs> but you can but you can just Google and find that. Yeah, I think Otherwise. it's in like six font at the bottom left hand corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which one? It's in six font. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you can get access these slides <laughs> afterwards. There was a lot of text in the first one. I thought it was not going to be presented. I thought it was just going to be sent out. That's why it's more sort of text based. But uh, uh, I've heard these will all be uploaded, and and you will all be able to to access them after the uh, the event. That's right, Mark, right? Great. Yeah. OK, thank Thanks. you. OK. Right, so uh, my name is Rob Hull. I'm from BT, part of a small four-person team based here in Silicon Valley. Uh, what our team does is global scouting. So um, as well as four people here, I've got a guy based in Israel and a number of part-timers in Europe. And what we do is look for innovative companies, new disruptive business models, cool new technology, and help BT understand what new partnerships should be forming, primarily to launch new services back in the UK. Uh, but we're sort of like the tip of the iceberg of our innovation team. Um, what we found is, is probably like most enterprises, our business is critically staffed to run last year's business in the most cost-effective way possible. <laughs> so when you actually approach them with the new idea, the first thing they go is, we don't understand that, and we don't like working at weekends, so we don't think we'll look at it. So what we've actually got in our, in our team is a whole load of skills that we inject into the lines of business back in the UK to make the innovation go forward. So first of all, we've got a group of people like MBA students that we inject into the business units to help them with the early stage business case. We've also got a team which will do prototypes or trials to get through that stage. We've got a, a team which will do showcases for our global customers. So when we want to bring in Fortune 2000 type companies, we can actually show them new startups ideas and run those ideas past our, our end customers to see whether it fits. And then lastly, we've, we've got a hothouse team. So if we're not really sure how to use a new innovation, we can run a one or two day hothouse session either with internal BT people or with external customers to get their views on how we can leverage that new technology. And what we found is typically my team will look at about 500, 550 companies a year of which 50 we get sort of serious with and we'll get a, a dialogue going with our UK lines of business. And then about five or so of those will actually result in procurement contracts where we're using them for some sort of service back in the UK. So you want to go on to the next slide, Mark? And the sort of things we're interested in, I, I've, I've decided to put it in layers and why not. Um, so the first thing to note is certainly for my company, our propensity to do business with you is inversely proportional to the weight of your kit. So if you're trying to sell me a huge router which is going to handle terabits worth of traffic, my people are going to go, you know what, if that doesn't work, uh, we go bankrupt. Don't think I want to deal with a startup for that just yet, if you don't mind. If you're starting selling us smaller boxes or software, that's a lot more modular. We can test that. If we're looking at stuff at the edge of our network, that's something that we can prototype and trial. And if anything goes wrong, it's a lot less risk to us. And therefore, we're far more keen there to deal with new disruptive suppliers in that sort of space. But going from the bottom to upwards, we're a fixed and mobile infrastructure company. So all of those buzzwords you've seen on everybody's slides, you know, we're interested in SDN and NFV equipment. Um, in particular, we're looking at rural access. So um, we've got a commitment to do 100% of geographic coverage of 4G. 
So, you know, you've got to start looking at very cost-effective base station technology, whether it's drones or balloons in the air to, to cover mountains when nobody ever goes, but let's make sure uh, we've got some 4G coverage there. Similarly with broadband, you know, it's very easy rolling out fibre to the home in a dense city. When you're trying to roll it out to an island in the middle of nowhere, what's the best sort of technology you're going to use? Um, on top of that, a number of platforms uh, were different to most telcos in that not only do we sort of run a your standard sort of quad play of voice, broadband, um, IPTV and mobile, we've actually also got a television station. So we produce uh, four channels of 24 by 7 sport. We've got the largest sports studios in Europe uh, and therefore we're very interested in TV production technology. Uh, we're the first people to launch a 4K channel in, in the UK. Uh, and my uh, operations director of our TV business says it's called 4K because it costs four times as much as everything else he's ever bought. Um, so we're very interested in new technologies to, to film and produce 4K content uh, more cost effectively. Um, you'll see there's a vertical there on IoT. I think we're all getting excited about IoT. We're probably getting a bit overexcited about it, to be honest. It's been around for a large number of years. It just used to be called M2M, but now it's called IoT. It's sexy, and we're all investing millions in it. But, but it, we are interested. So outside of those sort of transportation and industrial verticals, which have been around for a large number of years, we're looking at what those new vertical solutions could be. So they could be smart cities. Um, it could be... Um, yeah, consumer fleet management type propositions, smart home. So very interested in IoT, both the platform layer uh, and the verticals. And then the last then devices. Um, like folks like AT&T and what have you, we, we, we find, to be honest, if we take an ordinary device and we slap our logo on it, customers just buy it. It's really quite good. They usually buy it at about 20% more than it would cost if it didn't have our logo on. Therefore, we make a lot of money selling devices. Um, used to be telephones, but you know, sort of analog telephones don't sell that well anymore. So in the UK, we find if it's a broadband, an internet-connected device, we're very, very keen to talk to people with that. We'd like to resell it in the UK. And for our mobile business, EE, um, it needs to be LTE connected. So we're not really that interested in Bluetooth connected devices, you know, ancillary wearables. We're more interested in stuff with core radios in. Uh, our, our view is, is, you know, we want to form a, a network of cellular connected devices rather than PAN devices. Um, and then on the right hand side, customer experience. You're probably all aware that telcos are number one for customer service, uh, as long as you only have telcos being measured in that, in that case. <laughs> so we're all quite keen on improving our customer service and customer experience. So like most people, we're looking to use new digital um, technologies, you know, we like, want to launch self-service which customers really like rather than self-service that, that customers sort of just put up with. Uh, we're also very interested in new um, ways of targeting customers with bespoke products just for them. So all of this new concept of understanding what your customers really like and developing tailored propositions on a one-off basis and, and doing over-the-top marketing is something we're really keen to learn about and, and sort of copy the OTT players and, and actually change our cost and marketing efficiency. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Banerjee. Let's skip to the next one, maybe. All right. So um, uh, we are probably the newest operator in the world. Um, we just um, uh, opened our network um, for, uh, for the public uh, first of September, and uh, that's why I thought uh, maybe um, we should uh, need a bit of introduction. Um, Geo is uh, the newest operator in India. We are purely 4G, no legacy, no 2G, no 3G. What that naturally means is we have Volti for voice. Uh, we also have uh, public uh, Wi-Fi hotspots in a lot of metro areas and, uh, and a lot of cities around the country. Uh, that's our network side, which is what you see in the top three logos. Now, uh, above and beyond networks, we are also bringing uh, what we call the digital life experience um, by bring uh, together a whole set of, um, uh, whole set of uh, apps and app-supported application, uh, app-supported contents, uh, Geo TV, uh, Geo Cinema for live TV and uh, VOD, Geo Chat, um, a, um, enhanced uh, 
version of a, a messenger application. GeoMoney for both um, uh, both our self-service bills as well as um, as a general in-commerce. Um, GeoSecurity uh, for um, whole variety of uh, mobile security from physical security of I lost my phone to is this app a rogue app. Uh, Geo music uh, for uh, streaming music um, uh, and uh, geo mags for um, uh, for um, uh, curated uh, mags uh, published out of uh, out of contents owned by uh, News 18, Geo News, um, uh, and a whole host of others. And um, we also uh, are really committed to bringing the cost of um, 4G down in India. Uh, and we're doing two uh, major things to do that. First of all, we probably have the lowest um, 4G data uh, cost um, uh, at uh, less than a dollar per GB at, uh, at, at most of our plans. And also, uh, we have launched our uh, own uh, branded uh, phones, um, Life phones. These are Android phones, 4G, Volti capable, at a price point where the lowest models go for uh, less than $60 a piece, uh, unlocked, um, and um, go um, up um, through various tiers. And um, while this is um, um, quite common in the, in the US, but uh, in India, people still pay for voice and SMS. We have eliminated that, so on our network, no uh, extra charges for voice and SMS. So uh, this has um, created quite a disruption in the Indian market, and uh, we are seeing uh, millions and millions of uh, customers signing up. Um, in some sense, um, that makes us both a telco as well as a startup. And we like to think of ourselves as a $20 billion startup. Uh, um, and, uh, and, um, you know, the, uh, uh, and, the, and the growth is, is um, phenomenal as a result. Uh, so with that, uh, with that introduction, uh, yeah. So the, the kind of things uh, that we are looking for. Um, so in, in, in the services domain, uh, IoT is always um, something where we're looking for uh, more diverse applications of IoT, and um, especially in the Indian context, um, the Indian government has uh, taken a number of initiatives to uh, take a number of cities around India of various different sizes and making them smart cities um, to wire up a um, whole host of different um, different um, civic applications uh, with an IoT backbone. So we are obviously very interested in um, in IoT in cities and also uh, in homes for all variety of smartphone uh, smart home applications. Um, we are um, creating more differentiated services for our enterprise customers. Whether this could be um, well, it is a call for innovation. So surprise us. Um, and uh, also, uh, the Indian government has uh, taken a uh, major initiative towards digitizing a number of things uh, from, uh, from um, uh, identities to uh, tax um, forms to pretty much most, uh, most, um, uh, most interactions that citizens have with um, with the government, so in governance, uh, while that's not exactly our application, it's something that um, uh, ultimately aids stuff. Um, and um, uh, we're obviously uh, keenly following the on-demand economy. Uh, um, you know, Uber and all those things are um, uh, getting very popular in India as well. And um, uh, and we're very interested to see how that um, uh, that um, uh, those type of business models uh, grow. Um, going from services to um, user experience. So uh, 
We, uh, like I said, we, we have launched our, our devices, uh, but uh, we are at the end of the day device agnostic, and, uh, um, uh, and we are uh, always on the lookout for, um, uh, for kind of the, the, the next domain of what you can do with this uh, all 4G, all IP network that um, wasn't there and now is. Um, ARBR, um, um, good uh, applications that, um, that uh, catch on and, uh, and can, uh, uh, can utilize that, uh, that 4G bandwidth is, a, is uh, something that's, uh, that's always interesting. Uh, and um, also what I call AI enhanced UX. So um, this um, could be, uh, well, this could be anything, but um, fundamentally uh, think about it as you have, um, uh, you have this you know, multi-core Android smartphones in your hand, a, a, a fantastic uh, OIP network, and what can, you, uh, what can you bring to user experience above and beyond uh, the, the standard applications that we see here. Uh, digital health, um, we do have um, some uh, health applications um, that uh, we had been um, looking at and, uh, um, and again, um, it's a country of a billion people. Um, sure, a lot of them feel, fall sick, so um, how can, um, how can uh, the network be uh, utilized to, to get um, services at, uh, at a low cost to the, to the, to the patients in, in, in need. We're, uh, we're gonna have to try to um, uh, okay. get into the next stage of the panel. Um, are, were there any, any other really quick things you wanted to highlight there? Or? Uh, next uh, okay. slide for, yeah. So okay. uh, you can shoot us an email and um, we are here, in Dallas and in Mumbai. Um, that email will read it to me and uh, yeah. Okay, so um, thank you. Uh, uh, I want to have an opportunity to work in um, uh, some questions here on, on some of this as a follow-up to the, these, uh, the, the slides that you presented. So I was always, I was curious a little bit, and maybe you can describe, anybody want to take a stab at this, the, the, all of you sort of, um, or many of you had this sort of portal that, uh, that one can go on to submit an idea or a plan, and then, you know, there's, there, it looks like there's this sort of initial triage process. Um, would any of you like to just comment a little bit about what happens at that point? So, like, who's the person who, like, sees that to start off, and then w what is the journey from there if there's, if there's interest? Like, what, if you could just describe a little bit about, like, the process <laughs> there. Um, I, I can start with that one. Yeah. So, uh, that is a portal that we review um, on, a, on a weekly basis. There's a team of us that review yeah. all the... Um, all the opportunities that come through. Mm -hmm. um, we take a look at every one of them. We figure out who it is within the company that should look at this particular opportunity. Um, we assign it to that person. Um, when we pull it through, you get notified. So you know that we've seen it and that we've uh, pulled it through into our system. Um, I put it in front of the different product teams um, every week. And then I constantly um, follow up with those teams to see if they've had any thoughts, if they'd like to have, for example, if they need more information, if they'd like to have a call to learn more with a specific team or the company, um, or whether this is something that we're not interested in. We try and give an answer as quickly as possible because it's just as good to know um, that we're not going to move forward as it is to know that there's something there. Uh, so once, once you are in the system, um, if we are not able to work with you right away, um, it's not necessarily that we won't work with you um, in, the, in the future. So there's frequently the opportunity where somebody will come to me and say, there was that company, they did this thing, it was really cool. Um, I wasn't able to do anything then, but I'd really like to look that up again now. And so we have the ability with our system to be able to go in and, and draw on those companies and, and be able to put them in front of the, the relevant product teams at a more opportune time. Would anybody else like to comment a little bit about sort of the process? Well, yeah, I mean, from, from Talia's perspective, I, I choose to, to sort of focus on, on the consumer side. Uh, yeah. 
And as you saw, there was a bunch of different uh, ways in to, to contact us, depending on the different areas. Um, if you take distribution partnership, there's a, dis there's a, a team doing that, team of, of uh, partnership managers. So if you, send, if you shoot an email with an idea to, to uh, that address, uh, it will be picked up by one of the partnership managers, and, and they will sort of discuss uh, sort of the, the possibility to do joint business, basically. Um, when it comes to the Telia zone, it's, it's basically up for anyone to, to, uh, to uh, apply for a development kit, the developer kit, and, and if it fits in, yeah, you will be, be, be sent the developer kit. I think we've sent out 60 or 70 developer kits so far. Uh, and uh, for, uh, for the Telia Sense, the connected car, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, shoot an email with your idea. There's a partnership team dedicated working with that product and, and, and so on. And there's an venture investments. If, if it doesn't really fit into that area, you can always sort of uh, send it to the, to the venture team. And uh, we are trying to, to sort of have our tentacles out there and, and talk to all, all the different people in the organization. How many people on your venture team? Two. Two. <laughs> And I'm the one that sort of focuses more on, on the scouting part and, and yeah. finding new opportunities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so for, for our team, there's only three of us here, um, but because we're 6,000 miles away from, from the UK, we tend to do all the triage ourselves initially. As I said, there's probably a 10 to 1 ratio of, of companies we look at that we actually start engaging back with the UK folk. Uh, but that means we do spend probably about four hours a day on the phone back with the UK people talking through ideas, understanding, you know, um, to use a, a Wayne Gretzky expression, to understand where the puck is going. Um, you know, what we try and do is, is stimulate their ideas on what they could be doing next year, understand where their generic thrust is, and throw them companies which are going to take them towards their vision. Um, if you wait for our business units to say, we're really interested in this, then you tend to find they've already got five suppliers in mind for it, and mm -hmm. you're just the sixth supplier, and it becomes a long, drawn-out process. So, so what we tend to do, we, there's three of us. We, we basically, I look at the consumer, uh, as in my job title says, actually. I look at consumer and uh, propositions and all the underlying infrastructure, comms infrastructure type products. And then one guy on our team looks at all the business to business stuff and all the compute architecture. And then the other guy looks at digital and customer service. So it's quite easy how we, we, we arbitrage between the three of us. And then we'll get in contact with you, you know, have a half hour, one hour meeting to, to really understand what that pitch is. And then those ones which really fit where BT is. And I echo what Christina says. Sometimes things don't get through because the market isn't ready or our teams right. are focused elsewhere or it's just not a good fit for that time. You know, we, we've had times, I mean, just one, one company yesterday I reconnected. We met with them when they were in their first stage and at Redshift and they had a product which was looking at SIP security for enterprise networks. I met with them and we said, well, that's really good. Our, our largest supplier of enterprise voice over IP is Cisco and they use H323. So you've got a brilliant product, but right. not for my base. Mm -hmm. um, now, ironically, they've decided that they don't want to sell SIP security solutions to enterprises anyway. Uh, so we're now re-engaged looking at how that could be used for an IPX global interconnect mm -hmm. type proposition. So, so these things are, you know, they're time bound. Mm -hmm. um, we have our own database, which we log stuff in and then we, we try and go back um, you know, when we do get requests for new ideas in, so they're not just using the memory of the last five companies we saw, but, but sort of yeah. looking over what the last sort of, you know, two to three years worth of innovation has been. Deborah, is your uh, yeah, process so, similar? Yeah. So uh, we are pretty um, nimble in that sense. Um, like we said, we are also a startup, uh, just a really big one. Um, uh, typically, uh, you come to, uh, come to us and, um, um, then we would reach out internally to the right stakeholders. Uh, if there is uh, interest, um, we will have a initial uh, call or face-to-face, -face, depending on the location of the startup, and uh, uh, and then um, uh, uh, from that point on, it depends on the fit and uh, value prop and so on and so forth. Would Would any of you like to? Um Talk about very briefly um, an example. Let's just say in the past year, of a of a company that has you know you were that you were exposed to in some shape or form that you sort of brought on board and maybe shepherded through the process or made it through a couple of stage gates that you know maybe would be an interesting example. You don't even have to necessarily name the company if you want to. You can, but you're, you know maybe the type of company. It'd be interesting to sort of just understand a little bit about the journey was like and and you know an example of a successful 
sort of onboarding process. Who, who wants to jump in on that? Oh, yeah. I'd be happy to. Yeah, uh, great. It's actually, uh, we have a company that we just finalized the investment in as well. So, okay, uh, great. We, o we only invest in, in the sort of the, the companies that we partner up with. Yep. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, that, that kind of puts a light on of the joint process in investing and partnering. Yep. Uh, it's a company called eBuilder, uh, software as a service company, and, and one of their business units, and the interesting one for us, which is they're sort of a startup within, uh, is um, uh, sort of a, a a way to, to take care of the life cycle of hardware. So it's a customer care sort of uh, product. So it, it's manifested through an app, but it basically takes care of everything from, from when the customer has bought the, the handset, the tips and tricks and so on, and, yeah. and then through uh, when you break your, your, your screen, uh, guiding to the nearest uh, place to repair it, uh, so enabling us to, to bring in partners on that, uh, and then uh, back up and, and all that. Uh, but basically, that started out with uh, a guy in, in the uh, channels organization, uh, sort of the customer care organization within in Telia, Sweden, uh, came across this company, um, and he brought me into a meeting. Uh, we started sort of brainstorming how could this, this, this actually work, and we realized that this is, uh, this is a great fit for us. This is where, where we want to move sort of the, uh, how we work with, with hardware. And we realized that uh, this is probably an opportunity when it comes to operators globally, when it comes to right. uh, this solution. Uh, so we realized that if we're going to do this, if we're going to pilot this kind of solution, uh, we're probably going to create some value as well. So, so we decided to move ahead with an investment jointly. Uh, and now, um, uh, since a couple of months, uh, the, the solution, solution is, is launched, uh, the first one. That's a, no, that's, yeah. a, that's a great example. Anybody else like to talk about an example? So Rob? we've got one which is in, yeah. in the sort of pipeline, but it sort of highlights one of the ways we work. So a company actually we met at, at one of the uh, telecom council events, uh, a company called RAP. Um, so they've, in a nutshell, they, they've got a, an HTML5 sort of e-brochure type solution for, for doing uh, really quite uh, engaging customer experience uh, using mobile phones. Um, so what we, we met with them here, we qualified them in. They actually gave us our SDK and, and our prototyping team who have knocked up a number of, of examples. And then our team is actually taking that through the business at the moment, trying to engage with the various business units to say, well, this is what we thought you could use it for. Tell us how you think it might be used for, for first billing engagement or, or, or helping customers understand that their product when they first buy it. Um, so we're actually at that, that stage now where, where our business units are now liking what we've shown them in terms of prototypes. So the next stage is I've got our, our CEO actually of our, of our business, um, our, our, our SMB and national business over here in a month's time. He's actually then meeting with the company. So that just gives you an idea of what we did yeah. is, is we sort of took the onus off the startup to start up with, because if they can give us a, the ability to actually demonstrate and prototype it themselves, they don't need to fly 6,000 miles back to the UK. We can actually act as their agent and really only utilize their resources when they're at that next stage where, where there's a, a hope of a contract coming. Mm. Yeah. I, I was just going to say that the experience, I think, differs depending on what kind of a company or a product you have. So yeah. we are revamping our entertainment tab. So there's a couple of really cool, fun things that have come in, like Niantic's Pokemon. Um, there's um, you know, opportunities with, with uh, some e-readers and some books, some magazines, some um, other kinds of games. Um, those kinds of draft kings is one as well. So those kinds of companies come in. It's pretty quick to get them onboarded um, through the process yeah. and then part of something that we're going to be rolling out pretty shortly. If you're somebody that has something really complicated, you're part of the network, um, you're doing small cell, you're doing backhaul, you're doing something like that, that's a way more complicated um, and uh, sort of a much longer process. You obviously work with um, the network team and, and there's a lot more involved in getting that tested and proven um, than you know, like a DraftKings app would be, for example. Well, let's open it up. We have about uh, 10, 12 minutes left. Uh, so uh, that one of our CEOs, we've got four CEOs, would recognize. Uh, and it, so it has to be a significant new innovation recognizable at the top two tiers in our organization. So we measure ourselves on the number of nuggets a year that we generate. Yes, yeah, yeah my, my bonus, the, the primary part of my bonus is the number of new launched services uh, which, which comprise of a, a nugget from my scouting team. 
So you're incented to have, have companies succeed within yes, your organization. I, 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 absolutely. So part of that is we're not probably as good as we could be on the nose, but, but you know, what, what we need to be is to guide those companies through the process within BT and, and make sure that you know, something comes out of the rear door. Lots of prototypes and trials, you know, that's interesting. Yeah. But I actually get paid when it reaches the far end of the process, not, not getting through the first two gates. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? Well, I mean, from, from my part, I, I work with the investment side, so it's, yeah. it's pretty clear what, <laughs> what kind right. of a successful right. investment or not. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's also a partnership with the company, and when, when it comes to the partnership, it's, uh, we want to create new revenues. So reven new revenues are the target, uh, or, it, uh, or create cost savings, some real cost savings in some way or the other. So, so there's a business case always with the partner, of course. Other questions? Yes. Hi. Hi. I've got one for Christina. Very simple and practical. You mentioned that you were entering the companies you're meeting in a system. What is the system? So it's that innovate.sprint.com. We call it the opportunity funnel. It's a home-baked system. Um, and it's just it's a portal where you uh, have the ability to put your information in, um, upload a deck as well. But it's, it's, um, it's not you know, commercially available. It's one that we built ourselves. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Other questions? Yes. Uh, purely from a stage perspective of, of the startup, do you look at if the, it's at a uh, idea stage or demo stage or a POC stage or trial stage? Or is that important to you, not important to you, or how do you look at that? Um, who wants it? Bob? For, for us, very important. Um, typically, it has, to have, it has to be demonstrable. I mean, most of it, unless it's very, very disruptive, where, where we'll look at early stage stuff, mm -hmm. typically our lines of business, it has to pass that show me. So, you know, show me that you, you've done your own, you know, B to C trials, so that you there's a bit of uh, customer feedback on what it looks like. You know, if we're looking at B to B, we want to understand, you know, how easy is to sell, what's the service issues. So, so typically, if you're using VC type wording, we'd be looking at stage B type companies, ones which have got early product to market. It might be a prototype product, but at least we we, we can see that actually there's something there, and we can touch it and feel it, and actually run it past our customers. So it's beyond the demo stage, then. It's sort of Ready for POC or ready? Yeah, trial. ready for. It doesn't necessarily mean you're ready for launch, but it absolutely has to be ready for proof of concept. Yes. Unless it's very, very disruptive. If it's very disruptive, we'll work with earlier stage. But that okay. tends to be more of our labs guys, mm. um, you know, because they're really interested in stuff which is massively exciting, but two to three years out. Mm -hmm. Our business units, you know, that they've got three-month targets. So if they can't see site to revenue in 12 months, they're going come back in 12 months' time. Okay, so somewhat a uh, follow-up question to that. I think um, you spoke from very much from a revenue generation perspective. Or it could, be, custom, it could be in or it could be customer cost service to... or saving money. But any of the okay. metrics we're looking at, it, it's got to be able to deliver. You know, my, my team is about taking external innovation and, and basically shortening that yeah. time to realization. We, we've, got, you know, we've got 300 labs guys that do amazing work, but they're typically working on an 18-month to three-year time frame. My team is working on a three-month to 15-month time frame. Mm -hmm. but Anybody else want to talk a little bit yeah. about their stage product? Yes. Um, so for us, it's all of the above. So we have uh, worked with really early stage startups, ideations, uh, and formation, and uh, guided them into how that can help us, um, as well as um, mature startups with products uh, actually uh, ready to be dropped into the network and lighted up and everything in between. So um, the key criteria is not the stage of the startup, but the value add it can bring to us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I, I can only resonate with, with what you said. I, I think it's uh, sort of a B stage if you talk investment language. That that's uh, typically where we see the sweet spot. And uh, I think that we, as as big telcos and corporates, we're kind of bad at working with with small startups because as a a small 
newly founded startup with not that much funding, uh, your, I mean, your, your, the, the asset that you don't have is time. And <laughs> from a, a big corporate perspective, I mean, it's not strange for our procurement to lag out like a year in a yeah. process to, to procure something. And then that can actually literally kill companies. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why, why we stay out of the really early stage. But then we have, I mean, to, to sort of cover that area, we have the, uh, uh, the accelerators and right. those kind of programs. So. Good. Any other any, any other questions? All right. Well, um, got a couple of minutes left, and, and since this is we're closing out, we're close to closing out TC3, and you all have been intrepid in staying. I'm going to do a little lightning round thing. This is going to surprise you. Even the guys didn't anticipate this, but <laughs> I'll, I'll throw a question your way, which is okay. Um, in the next, so we're going to have a TC3, obviously, about a, a, a year from now. So in the next, within the next year, I would love to see a company that does. X, fill in the X, fill in the blank. Why don't we start from uh, the immediate, the immediate right? Not, not to overly put you on the spot or anything, but. Uh, wow. <laughs> um, I'd like to see a company that can really uh, make a compelling use case come out uh, uh, that's enabled by artificial intelligence. Okay, a company that's enabled by artificial intelligence. I think I would love to see something that um, finally sort of captures and delivers a great virtual assistant um, experience on the phone. So the ability for it to know what I want ahead of time and to make recommendations in a non-creepy way, but in a, yeah, in a non-creepy way. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one, actually. Yeah. So like a whole a new version of like a Siri or Alexa, but like... Even right, the further but something that anticipates yeah. and can kind of, based on what I have done, make recommendations and... And actually works. And it actually <laughs> works and it's not too invasive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I... That's a good question, actually. That, that, w that was a good answer, but <laughs> I, I would really like to see something that, that really sort of shows okay. uh, how we're going to use 5G. Mm. Okay. I'd like to see an IoT or smart home proposition that the mass market wants, uh, yeah. not geeks. <laughs> and and will pay for, by the way, because yeah. everybody wants stuff that's free. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and I also echo, yeah, and, 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 and I don't want to see another company that talks about machine learning, but can actually tell me what problem they're solving and what data they need of me to solve that. Because yeah. my rule of thumb is that every company that talks about machine learning, I glaze over until they actually tell me what are they doing machine learning on and why yeah. should I care? Right. So any machine learning company that I care about, I'd really like to see. Okay. So Derek said we're, we're going to move to the wrap-up because my next question was going to be, but we didn't do, please don't bring me another company that does X or says, says they yep. can do well, X. Well, that's fine. Don't, don't bring me a machine learning company. company. Yeah, right, right. That's, that's, that's right. the problem. That question is too good to skip. Do right. it. <laughs> do it. That's all right. We're all right. Go last the way, so. so please don't bring me a co another company that says they can do X. Anybody want to weigh in on that? These guys see hundreds of companies a year. I would actually say storage. I mean, okay. I, I, I'm still surprised that there, there are new companies coming out that are like a Dropbox copy. Yeah, mm -hmm. a relatively undifferentiated. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 In, a, in an already That's, crowded yeah. space. Yeah. So the reason no, not everybody has to answer that one, but yeah. if, if you're so tempted, yes. Anything to do with 2G or 3G? Say that one more time. Anything to do with 2G or 3G. Okay. That's IoT. <laughs> That's good. Um, please don't bring me anything that does quantified self. Uh, quantified, quantified self. self. No, quantified okay. self, I'm full. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. Done, done, okay, yeah. The danger of those questions are that, of course, we'll be the person saying, I believe there's a market for five computers in the world. Right. And in your case, uh, a, a, a digital home product that isn't uh, something for the mass market, I guess in your case, right? <sighs> yeah. I mean, I was only looking the other day at my notes. About five years ago, you could almost do a double A to Z, or A to Z for people who speak American, of, of smart home companies. Mm -hmm. And I finally decided I actually might want to actually put a smart home system in my, in my house. And they've all gone bankrupt, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the exception of smart things that got acquired by, by Samsung. And it right. just actually shows you that yeah. all of these companies five years ago were predicting that smart home was going to be huge. All of them had a terrible customer experience. Right. They didn't actually have a compelling business model. Oh, you can save loads of money on energy. Really? Yeah. 
you know, oh, you can replace your burglar alarm with something that doesn't really work. Right. Not really, <laughs> that's yeah. not really that useful either. Oh, you can turn the lights on. Right. Wow, not that switch didn't really work that well. <laughs> oh, how about you can change the right. bulb colour from yellow to red to purple. <laughs> Shit, you know, just the other day, I wish that I could change the bulb colour from yellow to red even, to purple. Well, even, well, Nest, oh, even Nest is going... You know, I just know that my granny is desperate for that solution. <laughs> I don't want to stop you. I feel like we should... We're reworking the agenda. Uh, could everybody leave the stage and leave Rob Hull up there, please, for the next hour? <laughs> Even Nest, which was the hot one in the space, has gone through a bit of a rethink. So well, that was a, fun, a was a fun note to conclude on. Thank you for yeah. uh, indulging me on those two questions. And, it was fun. And thank you, Mark, so, for moderating Rob, this one. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Derek, let's... Uh, right, so the, the official guidance right now is if the panelists could, could exit the stage. And Mark, if you could stay up, because uh, okay. I'm going to call you back in for this next discussion. All so right. thanks a lot once again to the panel. Good job, guys.